Hey, this is Joe with Grow It Build It, and today I'm going to be giving you an update to my leaf mulching for the 2021 growing season. If you've researched the benefits of leaf mulch at all, you've likely seen my video documenting two-year progress on soil improvement by utilizing leaves. At the end of that video, I showed you how I was adding around 12 inches of leaf mulch in the autumn of 2020, and this video is going to be an update in regards to that. I'm going to show you how many leaves I added in the fall, what it looked like throughout the growing season, how I plant vegetable plants inside this thick layer of leaf mulch and the lack of weeds throughout the year, some general observations, a garden pest that I encountered that was new and that could be related to the leaf mulch, and finally, how the leaves have broken down and I'll take some measurements as to how much beautiful black crumbly organic matter I have now on my topsoil. And uh, yeah, let's take a look. In my previous video on leaf mulch, which was a thorough documentation of all the benefits you can get, um, I showed you how I was preparing for the 2021 growing season. I'll put a card in the top right of that video if you haven't seen it, as you may wish to have a closer look because it goes into a whole lot of detail. But I added around 12 inches of leaves at the end of last year to the entire surface of my garden. Much of it was chopped up with my lawnmower to create a thick layer of mulch. The leaves are to help retain water, prevent weeds, and add fertility as they decompose in place. Early in spring, the leaf mulch looks like, well, leaves. After sitting out all winter, they get pretty compressed, forming a dense layer. As you can see here, it's very spongy though, but it's really just like wet leaves. By early April, it looked like it had compressed from 12 inches down to about four to six inches thick. And they really are just spongy, wet leaves, which all of you watching have probably come in contact with at some point in your life. By mid-May, I was getting ready to plant out my vegetables and to plant inside this layer of leaf mulch, what I simply do is I grab a hold of chunk of the leaf mulch and I just peel it back. It kind of comes up in one big single chunk. I dig my hole, add a bit of compost, and I plant my plant. When I backfill, I'll leave about a, a space of about three inches around the stem, exposing bare soil. I do this out of caution, trying to avoid any potential fungus that could develop near the stalk, just because they're still young seedlings. The soil improvement from the previous year's work was plainly evident, as you can see here. Probably two inches of good black stuff before I hit the inorganic junk that I normally deal with. Can't wait till next year. From mid-May onwards, my garden in general was weed-free. I would have random weeds pop up here and there, usually near one of the vegetable plants I had planted. Wood sorrel, clover, and crabgrass were the main culprits, and you know, the occasional dandelion as well. But I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that I probably spent less than 60 combined minutes weeding my garden for this whole growing season. That's it. I may spend five minutes when I would pop out there to check something, but in five minutes, I could pull pretty much all the weeds and be done. It really was an incredible savings of labor. Also, uh, if you guys are enjoying this content, please give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel out and I greatly appreciate it. So the leaves break down very slowly, starting in the spring, and then they seem to accelerate by the summer. July, the lower leaves seem to have decomposed or nearly done so, and by the end of August, almost all of the leaf matter had broken down in place. There was just a small layer, uh, a very thin layer on top that was still identifiable as leaves, and I mean it's really thin. To check the thickness of my leaf mulch, what I did was I put the spade into the soil and I rotated it forward so I could see the soil stratification better and trying to make it so you could really see what it naturally was, it wouldn't get mixed up. When I pulled the shovel out to see how thick my black gold layer was now, I was pleasantly surprised. Last year I showed you a layer that was, you know, a couple inches thick of beautiful composted leaves that had broken down in place. This year that layer has grown to a solid four inches, up to five inches thick in places. So I'm trying to do my best to do a side-by-side -side comparison here with last year's and what it looked like two years ago. But in a nutshell, my soil has gone from overcompacted and hard to dig 
to a much lighter consistency in which the spade easily slices through. And it's changed from being a completely devoid of organic matter or in soil a couple of years ago to having a very thick, four to five inch thick uh, layer of fertile black and crumbly soil that grows plants to levels that I had never before seen. And I did it just by using autumn leaves, a free resource. If you want to know just how many nutrients are present in leaves, I'll leave a couple of links below that have info that are based on university studies, along with some further information. But I need to tell you about a pest I ran into that I have not dealt with in the past. Or at least, if they were there, they didn't make a large impact, as I've never noticed them. But this year, my zucchini and spaghetti squash plants started out just fine, as expected. But in a short period, we went from harvesting to having plants die. And the problem I came to find out was squash bugs, an insect that I had never encountered before. At some point, I'll make a separate video on squash bugs, uh, so look for a card whenever that happens. But here's why it's pertinent to leaf mulch. It's possible for squash bugs to overwinter in the autumn leaves, which I obviously use. And it is entirely possible that they overwintered right in my garden in my leaf mulch this past winter. Probably equally possible that it also came from a neighbor's garden because I have spoken to some neighbors who also had their squash plants die. And it's very likely it's the same pest. But once I found the squash killing culprit, I had no trouble reducing their numbers as it's a pest that can easily be managed uh, as long as you stay on top of it. They seem to be difficult to totally eliminate, but nonetheless, the damage was done. The best non-pesticide I've found was just spraying them with soapy water, and that seemed to kill them right away to keep their numbers down. But I found them too late though. Next year, I will be much more alert to this pest, and I will get after any potential infestation quickly. But in my opinion, this problem should be able to be managed. Even still, the benefits that I get from leaf mulch far outweigh this pest. So the increased fertility in my soil has just been amazing over the last couple of years. In conclusion, based on my experience, the net results of leaf mulch is a big plus all around with almost no negatives. Leaf mulch will greatly improve fertility, water retention, and act as a weed barrier, which is an amazing thing because it saves you so much work having to weed your garden. You just, you don't have to, basically. And you can do all of this for free. The squash bugs that I faced this year could very well have found a home in my leaf mulch and you know my continued use of leaf mulch will likely harbor them for next year. But even still, the benefits far outweigh the common garden pest in my opinion and I'll be ready for them next year. But that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up as it really helps my channel out. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments as I do like trying to answer them. So thank you all for watching and you guys have a good one.